It's indeed back to school. Now, school placements have become a thorn in the flesh for many parents in the new academic year as schools are filling up to capacity with no spaces for new learners. Now, parents and guardians have been flocking to the Teachers Resource Centre in Vintuk to search for placement for their children. For more details, we are now joined uh, by Mr. Paulus Lewin, who is the Acting Director of Education in the Commerce Region. Good morning, sir, and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Tadius. Uh, good morning, Namibia. Very well. Now, uh, it seems like placements are always an issue during this time of the year. Why is that the case? Thank you, Tadius. First of all, allow me to wish all Namibians a happy um, New Year and also express the hope that um, this year we will work um, uh, together um, in the execution of our mandate, that is to provide accessible quality education to all our children. Yes, indeed, I agree with you that the uh, placement of children in, in not necessarily Comas region, but across the country have become a, a serious problem. Um, the public out there must take note that there are a lot of uh, dynamics at play, specifically in the case of Comas region being the, uh, the capital city, the economic hub, mm. and also the um, region we, uh, who hosts all, branch, all three branches of, of government, uh, which uh, implies that you have a large concentration of people yeah. in the city. And, you know, there are so many people uh, in search of employment, moving from one region to another, especially uh, to the Comas region. And all these, these factors have, have contributed to the situation where it becomes extremely difficult for the ministry to accommodate all children uh, in, in the local schools. You must also take note that you know, um, there is also an imbalance uh, with regard to the um, number of primary schools in relation to secondary schools. And then as much as the ministry is trying its level best to build uh, more and more schools and more classrooms, it still remains a challenge mm -hmm. because of the exponential uh, growth in the number of learners that uh, are in need of spaces in, in the region. Mm. So as a region, we, we have done all we could. Uh, since last year, 2020, we have uh, run the registration process, all advo advocacy uh, programs, where we have sensitized uh, the public uh, regarding the, uh, the registration process that had been uh, completed. Unfortunately, uh, I must say this morning that not all children could have been accommodated mm. in the schools. But uh, as a directorate, we are doing all we can to see to it that these children um, mm. have a place um, to attend their schools for 2021. Mm. So as of today, not all those who have applied have been placed. Now, what happens to those who have not been placed? You know, the, the schools have only resumed uh, yesterday for the mm. academic year. So we are in close consultation with, with school principals. Um, to ensure that all these children at the end of the day get a, a space in their schools. Mm. So we are calling really on all principals to, to work together with us, um, uh, think of innovative ways of how they can accommodate these children, either by way of increasing the numbers um, above the norm, or else uh, we also readjust the infrastructure in such a way that we have more space available mm. to accommodate the mm. children. There are options ideas at this point in time that we are uh, exploring. Uh, all these things unfortunately takes time. Yeah. And uh, there are other factors also that plays a role that makes it difficult for us uh, to accommodate these children from the start. Mm. Now we know that parents and guardians have been flocking to the teacher's resource center uh, as it usually administers the placement of uh, uh, learners. Is that still the case? Uh, Yes, um, you know, we, with, with COVID-19, uh, we, we have spread the, uh, the, the, uh, the points where mm. parents can um, go and, and, and get information. And unfortunately, the Teachers Resource Center is, is the most suitable venue at this point in time because of the space and the open spaces outside of, of the venue. And, and we have requested uh, parents to go there. We have paced up specifically with regard to grade 10, mm. the names of all the grade sevens of 2020 yeah. for them to see where they have been placed mm. at secondary uh, schools for 2021. So that mm. is the one point where they can go and, and receive the necessary services. Mm. Mm. On the other hand, the inspectors of education that are uh, housed in the Franz Ndongo Garden building in town 
is also ready to assist parents uh, if in the event they, they cannot secure places directly from schools. Mm. So, no. so mm. systems are in place and, and we are just um, asking the uh, public um, to be patient at least for the first week so yeah. that we can put all, all systems up and running. Mm. Now, so, some parents got uh, a placement for their children in other regions, but they would want uh, their children to uh, be transferred to the commerce region. What happens in that case, and what advice do you have for them? You know, it, it is so that uh, we cannot put restrictions on, on, on people, and that's within the uh, confinement of the law, the Constitution, and also our Education Act, mm. that people can, can um, enroll their children anywhere and everywhere. Um, it's just very, very challenging for us, especially in the commerce region where people specifically want their children to be enrolled because of uh, business opportunities, uh, transfers due to employment, and other related um, uh, factors. So what we have done is we, we, we have said to ourselves, we had an obligation towards our own children within the region that had been in our schools in 2020. So we will place those ones first, and only then after we have secured places for all of them, mm. we will now look beyond yeah. uh, uh, the commerce region in order to also accommodate children from other regions. And in every case will be dealt with on its own merit. Mm. And that is what uh, the broader public must also understand. Yeah, uh, you have of course alluded to the uh, Teachers Resource Center not being the only center that is administering this. But what are some of the other changes that came to light uh, as it relates to school placement due to COVID? Yeah, that, that's also the other matter that, uh, that we are very concerned about. It's, it's COVID, but we also say, you know, in as much as all of us say COVID is very bad for, for us, for the economy, for the country, for the world, I think there comes also good with, with the existence of, of COVID, mm -hmm. even though we would wish it to go away as soon mm -hmm. as possible. But what we have realized now with COVID and, and, and following the different modes of learning, um, we can actually now have more children into our systems because not all children are coming every day to school. Mm -hmm. We have cohorts, we have the time-based time uh, approach, mm -hmm. Uh, so there are different uh, ways how we can accommodate these children and which ultimately translate into the fact that you can have more children now coming because it's only half of the class, yeah. say for example, that comes to school today, half of it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that half can be a little bit more yeah. than say 20 or, or, or so and which allows us then to put more children into the school mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. But you're also not just dealing with uh, school placements, you're also dealing with an accommodation issue. Uh, how are you uh, faring on the accommodation side? Yeah, specifically with regards to commerce region, we, we have serious challenges because there are only so many um, hostels um, mm. uh, in, in, in the high schools. Uh, at this point in time, we have uh, a few of our hostels being, being renovated. Um, Concordia College being one of them, mm. uh, one of the biggest, and then also Ella Duplessis. Uh, the old uh, Augustinium um, secondary school mm -hmm. is the one that is now for quite some time under renovation, you know, and, and that really uh, affected um, the way in which we uh, can send children into our schools. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Paulus, uh, as, a, as a father, as a grandfather, as a guardian, what gives you anxiety when it comes to this new academic year? You know, there, uh, as I said, uh, as, as educationalists, mm. We, we are always optimistic and, and we have to, for the sake of our children, mm. we have to be very brave. And that's why my, my standpoint and that of the directorate and, and across the ministry is simply that, uh, you know, we manage uh, yeah. the, uh, the COVID pandemic in as far as it is possible to us. Mm. So we, we read the signs, we read the circumstances and, and as it di dictates, mm. we, we go with that particular flow and also we we have a broad-based um, consultation and network where not only us as um, people within the ministry are taking these decisions. We do it uh, uh, with uh, our line ministries, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Information, Communication, Technology. We, we do it in consultation with our unions, mm -hmm. our parents, um, our region, regional um, councillors. So there are quite a number of people that are very supportive mm. in, in steering this boat of education. And that makes it easier for us uh, to go ahead 
and, and seeing through that our children uh, complete the academic year successfully. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the visuals of uh, children adhering and schools adhering also. Children are wearing their masks properly and uh, teachers are outside the, the school gate sanitizing the children. And, and, and I think it's, 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 it's applaud. It's, up, it, it, it's, it's fair for us to applaud the ministry for putting such restrictions and uh, preparations uh, for the resumption of the, uh, of, of, the, of the teaching process as of yesterday. Yeah, that, that is, we are, we are excited we, and, and, and we are grateful for um, the work that the uh, frontline workers, the, uh, that is now the teachers um, and, uh, and unified staff are doing at this point in time. You know, all of us are really very exhausted. We have not rested that well, yeah. but uh, we have braved ourselves to say we are in this together. Mm. We must get through it together. True. And that's exactly what we are, are, are doing. People are adhering um, to the request that we made, all of us, mm -hmm. from the head of state up to the lowest person, uh, sensitizing people. And yes, uh, at all levels, people are really complying. It's a matter of us as leaders leading by example. Yeah, definitely. And doing the right thing. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your message to the parents and guardians of children. You know, at this point in time, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying simply to, to parents and guardians and caregivers, Please do not give, hope, uh, give up hope on, on, on the system. Uh, trust us, we are not every time doing the right thing. Uh, and, and, and therefore, we as a ministry are very open um, to, to new ideas and innovations and uh, suggestions uh, from the public. And as I said earlier, uh, together we, we are just stronger and, and we are confident that um, we will do the right thing in executing our mandate. Um, to the best of our ability. So parents must just remain very patient. Um, they, they have an open door uh, to our offices. I'm, I'm always available morning till late in the evenings yeah. and I'm ready to assist together with my team mm. to make sure that all children um, are supported, supported yeah. through this process because it's not very easy for any one of us. There are a lot of issues that are affecting us because of COVID. But I think if we uh, provide the necessary psychosocial support, uh, eventually we will make it. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Lewin. It's good talking to you. Thank you very much, Daddy. Very well. There you have it. I was in conversation with Mr. Paul S. Lewin, the acting director of education in the Commerce region. He was talking to us about uh, school placements and also encouraging uh, parents and guardians not to give up. Uh, school just resumed uh, recently, and they are working through the list of all those children who are not placed and uh, you'll be hearing from them in the next uh, week or so. Uh, and every child in Namibia will be placed. Do not, wor do not worry, just uh, register your concerns with them. They have an open door policy. The Teachers Resource Center continues to administer the placement of our children with so other, many other centers set up due to COVID pandemic. Jermaine, we'll continue after this short break. Stay tuned. <laughs>